Hello and welcome. My name is Stephen Nowakowski and I've been working on some 3D modelling showing the spatial footprint of wind and solar factories in Queensland. You have to remember this is just Queensland alone. Um, and I think the general public do not understand the task at hand to achieve net zero. Just to build a new electricity system, which only equates to 30% of our emissions, a complete overbuild of the electrical network needs to be undertaken. I say overbuild because we need to triple the nameplate capacity or the generation by three because of the low intermittent uh, nature of renewables. The problem in Queensland is that we do not have um, the wind along the coast where the electricity is being consumed. So therefore developers need to scale the heights of the coastal ranges and the Great Dividing Range to get elevation to tap into any of those wind resources that are available. And it is these areas that have escaped industrialisation, urbanisation and agriculture due to their rugged terrain and inaccessible uh, topography. These places are now under attack. And I'll show through this modelling the, the, the scale of this. Yes, we're looking at over 3,000 wind turbines along the Great Dividing Range of Queensland. This number will need, need to be tripled by three, say 9,000 turbines to keep the lights on over 4,000 kilometres of new haulage roads and over 100,000 hectares of remnant forests to be impacted upon with this rollout. Starting to the south of the state of Queensland, we've got Bottle Tree Wind Farm. Moving over to uh, what we've got here is McIntyre. Oh, we've got C Captain's Mountain. McIntyre Wind Farm, uh, the bulldozers are in there right now. That's very, very big wind farm. A number of uh, solar factories in there, up around Chinchilla. Moving into the Bungaban near Taroom in central Queensland. Um, we only found out about this wind farm about three weeks ago and then it went to straight to Plebisec two weeks ago. So we've had no capacity to comment. Wambo Wind Farm, uh, the Cooper's Gap. Cooper's Gap is operational. Iron Leaf Wind Factory. Yeah, and then heading over to uh, Tuan Wind Factory on the Sunshine Coast. Most residents would not know about this one. It's massive in scale. Uh, it, that was the first wind factory where the state government overturned legislation to build wind factories inside state forests, which is a bad precedence. Moving into Stony Creek, this is a shocker on a really beautiful uh, mountain range, remnant forests, should not be going ahead. I don't have the footprint for this Invara wind factory, but I do have the locations of the turbines. Our Doga, uh, that was, there was classified of concern forest there, that was cleared a few weeks ago. The offsets there were a scam. Moving into Specimen Hill, this was approved by Plebisec or the, the federal government two years ago. This should not have been approved. Beautiful, beautiful range of mountains. The Caribo Wind Factory, mostly on cleared land there. Banana Range, I was fortunate to go up in a helicopter just recently. Um, a nice range of mountains west of Rockhampton. Smoky Creek Solar Farm, again a huge amount of land covered in glass. Collide, that is a magnificent chunk of Range, range country. There should not be turbines going into that country. That's Upper Calliope, 2,700 hectares of solar. A massive solar factory which is going to be used as an offset for Rio Tinto smelters. Mount Hopeful was just recently approved by Plebisec. Uh, yellow belly gliders, northern quolls, a magnificent range of mountains that should not be fragmented and blasted out. Boulder Creek, again a wonderful remnant chunk of mountains, high biodiversity. This has been approved. We're expecting bulldozers into this area any day now. 
a disaster wind factory that should not be going ahead. Moving over to Mower Creek wind factory of ground truth here again, great remnant forests. Um, this cliff line, all these, all these ranges covered in turbines and roads. Roads up to 60 metres wide for cut and fill up the steep inclines and the steep gradients. Moonlight range, a beautiful range of mountains again. Here we see Moonlight Range, I've been there, magnificent, should be a national park. It's gonna get carved up and smashed to smithereens. Moving over to the Boomer Range Wind Factory, in the foreground here is uh, Goodadulla, um, Goodadulla National Park. Um, and hard up against that national park is the Boomer Range Wind Factory by Arc Energy. In that northern section there, of concern vegetation, wonderful vegetation, again to be fragmented. My best experience with greater gliders were in this part of the wind factory area. Moving north, Clark Creek, I flew over this a couple of weeks ago and there is four bulldozers in there right now, smashing the beautiful vine forests on top of this range. The most wonderful uh, patches of forest left west of Rockhampton harbouring the full suite of biodiversity and no sediment control, no erosion control, roads being pushed through. The northern section, particularly to the north up here, is sacrilege. It should not, these roads should not be going in there. That should all be national park. Beautiful range of mountains. Coming into Lotus Creek, there's two dozers in there right now. I hope to be down there soon, photograph this. A complete disaster, should not have been approved. Highest density of koalas in Queensland, highest density of greater gliders in Queensland. This should be the Great Koala and Greater Glider National Park of Queensland. The densities of koalas in here is phenomenal. I've never seen so many koalas in my life and it should not be smashed to smithereens for a wind factory. Yungala and the Proserpine and Mount Challenger wind farm sites, people don't know the scale of that. That is about, there's about three to 400 turbines going into that country, into that hinterland behind Proserpine. Here we have solar factories, Karma, Hidden Valley. This is a new one we just found, Hidden Valley wind factory, joining the Mount Fox wind factory. This is wet sclerophyll forest, 55 wind turbines, this is a switching station that's been built. There'll be a best built next to that. This is country on top of the Seaview Range, the most magnificent country you'll ever see. Again, worthy of National Park. Uh, Earmarked to be smashed. This is the Upper Burdekin site. The biodiversity on this site, the, the endangered species list is off the charts. All this country beyond the Mount Fox Crater, turbines, koalas, three gorge systems, hoop pines, shaman's rock wallabies, mark stows, rufous bedongs, um, magnificent brood frogs uh, and even a red, red goshawks were found on this particular site. Moving over to the west on the alignment of Copper String 2.0 line, we've got the Kennedy Wind Factory that's already operational, Prairie and Wongalee on the south side of the Porcupine Gorge National Park. This is really to facilitate the critical mineral mining, it's not necessarily to provide electricity but critical mineral mining in that area so we can build even more renewables. This is the Mount James area. Um, it doesn't show on the satellite imagery but it is of high biodiversity. Uh, that Kidston pump, that the, the Forsyth wind farm, good koala population in there. This is Shalumban. We've just recently won the battle against Shalumban, but it's still in the pipeline. It hasn't it's only been withdrawn. It hasn't actually been officially refused or knocked back. Yeah, so 94 turbines in wet sclerophyll forest, uh, Caban, this is now operational. 28 turbines in the scheme of things, quite a small wind factory. Uh, beautiful forests were cleared, fragmented, and uh, we've now seen all the raptors in that area go, and that's just been observed in the last six months. We're also seeing koalas and mammals moving away from that area where the turbines are. High road wind factory, Problem with that is that they need to put uh, high, 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 high voltage transmission lines through the adjacent Bluff State Forest. Mount Emerald, that's the 
Queensland's first industrial wind factory, Shuko Road Solar. Desailly, uh, 2,000 hectares of savanna woodlands to be cleared for that. Hard up against the AWC property uh, and Lakeland. I'll conclude by saying the entire length of our great dividing range is under attack. The places we hold dear, our wild, remote, places harbouring the last vestiges of our biodiversity are being blasted away right now by ruthless developers and facilitated by compliant state governments who are fast tracking the approval processes of these projects and also facilitated by the entire conservation sector who are totally asleep at the wheel, unable or incapable of stopping this juggernaut that they have unleashed. Conservation groups are on the wrong side of history on this and need to wake up fast.